Uh, let's be positive before we start, Matt. Council meeting today, mate. Always good community council meeting. Gives you a chance to sit there next to your beautiful wife and get told off officially. Yeah, well, hopefully there's no telling off this time, Marty, but this will be the official swearing in of our new community board and the councillor uh, alongside the four elected members. And uh, I think the wife is uh, hoping to become the chairperson uh, of it uh, today, which will give her a few more dollars and uh, maybe an extra beer or two for me a week. Hang on a second. So being deputy chair, who votes to be chair? Well, what happens is after they clear the community board out, they start fresh. If somebody is nominated, there'll be no election. They will be given the role of chair. And then a similar thing will happen with the deputy. But I think there's been a bit of manoeuvring going on over the last few weeks, Martin, to knuckle down the numbers. And given there's only four of them, it shouldn't be too hard to work out who's going to be chair. And given only one of them's been a member of the community board in the past, it probably should be that person i.e. the wife. So do you get a chance to vote for this? And obviously you posted your vote in and obviously she oversaw you posting that vote in or are you allowed in democracy to vote for who you like? Yes, no, I voted for whom I liked. And uh, the funny thing was in terms of the community board, Martin, there were only four nominations for four positions. So I didn't have to vote for the community board as such. They were all given a free pass in. Right, okay. So it worked out well, and then I was able to vote by myself for the uh, councillors and mayor. Let's be positive. You know what I'm, 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 being, I'm being especially positive today because I was in the most positive euphoric stadium experience part of on Saturday night, and we'll talk about that in a second. But just harken back to you and your mob. Kangaroos, mate. I mean, if there's a thing called luck in sport, the Kiwis had none. But fair play to you. Oh, I think that's exactly right. Did you enjoy the game? Yeah, I I enjoyed the game. Yeah, I did. I think that probably that would have been a phenomenal final, wouldn't it? And actually, the tournament has thrown up a couple of surprises, um, England being beaten as well. But look, I thought you had it. I thought the Kiwis were going to win that, and there wasn't much in it. You know, we can go back to the referees, and we can go back to the decisions, and you can go all over it. I'm reading today by some saying that Maguire can't take the Kiwis any further uh, and they didn't look fit and they didn't look ready to play well they certainly looked okay to me yes same and way. I thought they had it and probably the right decision as we know Martin did come about but I'll tell you what I was extremely nervous there and you could see by the celebration of the kangaroos that they were pretty lucky they felt to get over the line too there's one good result out of the T20 gone couldn't perform there the Women's Rugby World Cup, hopeless. But at least we've made the final of the big one. Yeah. The, the big one, Mark. The big one. I know. The Rugby League. Really remind the me rugby league the final because Jason Costigan, he alluded to this before he, the start of the Rugby did. World he Cup. He did. And you, and you, you, decri- he? He do, you, do, you decried that. Look, and also Andy Raymond unfiltered on Wednesday called this. He said it was going to be an Australia Samoa final. We all scoffed and mocked, mate. We said there's no way. Matt, you don't turn around a 60-6 to six pasting three weeks ago and win it an extra time. That's an extraordinary performance from Samoa. And you've got to appreciate and realise, mate, that we're all Samoan or on that bandwagon this coming weekend. Uh, you know, as their coach says, little island in the middle of the Pacific there, they've made a World Cup final. It's a hell of a story. I tell you what, it's the story, I think. I think it's the story. And what the, I suppose the other thing that you need to remember is just think of the financial backing behind the team as opposed particularly to the Kiwis, uh, the Aussies and the English. You know, like it shouldn't happen, should it? Sure, they've got good players that are all playing in the NRL, but to bring an island nation together to be able to lift to make a World Cup final. I, I, I'm not sure that a nation of that size has ever done that before. Yeah, just trying to think. And do you know what I was thinking of? I was thinking you have to hark back to the 1991 Rugby World Cup when Samoa, I remember Manu Samoa, made the quarterfinals. They knocked out Wales. And, mm. yeah, there, it was this, it was almost like the same kind of mountain to climb. It's, it's, it's not an exact parallel, but I'm just trying, I'm, I'm, I was just trying to get, you know, another one. And, and, and this does cement... 
um, you know, the, the the new tier one status, not only of Samoa, but I also believe of Tonga as well. It's To me, it's a bit of a, the only shame about it, I mean, and from a New Zealand perspective, is that, is that you felt like the Kiwis versus the Kangaroos was, you know, effectively the final. Mm. But but fair play to them. I mean, look, you know, you go through a tournament, you play who's you play, and at the end, you get what you get. And they're in the final and we're not, so... And that's exactly how it goes. All right, you know, in the T20, we had that rained out game. We came down to run rate, whereas it probably wouldn't have happened otherwise. But that's life. You let the tournament play out. It's like, I I always think a tournament, a tournament situation is not like real life. No, you're right. You know, it's not, it's not that weekly grind. It's not that regularity. It's, it's all a bit, it's all a bit foreign every three or four years, depending on what you're involved in and how often they play it. And you've got to bring together a group of players with very little time. And then you've got a team, which we know, we know traditionally have been underfunded and probably in many ways under-respected, but not anymore. Not anymore. Absolutely not anymore. anymore. And And I think they were great games. You know, like they were exciting games. Yeah, both games were exciting. And so uh, the skill involved and shown and the guts and determination to hang on by the Sam Islands, phenomenal. Yeah. To me, that's 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 one of the great results. Matt, how do you, Matt Gunn with us, let's be positive out of twice. How, how do you reconcile what goes on? And before we even start on Italy, of course, versus the Kangaroos, and then we'll get to the Blackfins, but how do you reconcile mm-hmm. what goes on in a game of rugby at the moment uh, as opposed to what goes on in a game of league? Now, you saw in the Blackfins, uh, England lost a player, of course, uh, really clumsy, face on face, dangerous as, as all hell. That's a red card. Uh, you saw Dutoy against uh, France for South Africa just barges into a ruck using his head as a as a as a, as a weapon like a, like an NFL player. Uh, that's a red card. In rugby league, mate, these these aren't even called these things. Like if two players run into each other face on face, I mean that's just an unfortunate incident. I, I'm I'm gobsmacked every time I watch the sport. I don't think that you could see a bigger contrast between them at the moment. No, look, this particular rule I think has had very dramatic effects. And, and, and maybe even in 50% of the matches we've seen in rugby, you know, over the last few months, there's been so many of these accidental clashes. Mm. And they're clearly accidental. I mean, I, 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 I can't reconcile the idea that the administrators of the game can expect that this will never happen. You know, and, and do the Black Ferns win without that head clash? Don't know. Don't know. Don't know. I mean, nobody knows. Nobody it would have knows. been a lot harder, wouldn't it? Yeah, it certainly would have been like... Look, you know, the red card, yeah. it's harsh for a moment that... I, look, no, no. there's no thought going into... There's no malice. At, tackle. No, that's it. There's no, no malice. No, abs- absolutely not. And every time I see one now, I think, outcome of the game, it's going to be changed. Yeah, yeah, ab- Or absolutely. at least there's a, yeah. a real opportunity for, you know, the team who... Uh, hasn't had the players enough to turn it around, regardless of where the form is. So I think it's a real... Look, I understand all the head clashes and so forth. But if, you know, maybe if it was a real, real concern, maybe they should all wear headgear. You know, maybe the rule should be that for some of these incidents, we we start to wear headgear so that the bone-on-bone kind of, you know, the forehead to around the eye areas, all those sensitive areas that open up. We see in boxing and that all the time, you know, chins um, on, on the cheekbones or, or up around the, the eye socket where those head clashes open people up. Maybe they should all have headgear on if they really cared about it. Is that a is that a possibility? Well, they, but the thing is, they don't care about it in rugby league, mate. I mean, they don't. They just it, no. it just seems that this is actually still part of or what is accepted as part of the game. Um, you know the, sw- the you know the swing or the big chest on chest tackle that slips off the chest and smacks the face and and with all the seat yeah I'm just I think league is riding a really tight uh, running a tight rope at the moment and at some stage a class action will start and maybe that will change it. Let's go back to the rugby though, mate. Let's be Let's positive it. about Italy and. It's not that often that they get any glory at all in the oval ball game. They got some against you lot. It came down to a final kick. Uh, but it's not a game that Australia should lose. How can you go so goddamn close against France and then and then lose to it? I mean, what is wrong here? Oh, look, if there was an answer to the inconsistencies of the Wallabies, you know, it would be a lot easier to um, comprehend what happened. You know... 
I don't know how you look yourself in the mirror after losing to the Italians. They definitely shouldn't have. We've shown some great form. The Wallabies are just so up and down. Great form. Played well against France. Probably should have won. Didn't. But, and then you play Italy. You know, I tell you what, it, 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 I can compare it to only one thing. Almost being beaten by Scotland. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And so you think to yourself about, yeah, okay, you beat us. You know, we've run you close. You've beat us. Decisions decided some of our games. All Blacks nearly beaten by Scotland. Australia actually beaten by Italy. We've got a World Cup next year and nobody can bet on it. How can the TAB, how Set can the, the TAB odds, yeah. start to put odds together for that tournament? Like, I have no idea what's going to happen. My expectation is, is we don't make anything. We're gone early. Anyone will feel that the Wallabies are going to be one of those games that they can win regardless of who they are. Wales, Scotland, England, they're all going to feel, maybe even the Japanese. I'll be feeling like Italy has just beaten the Wallabies. How many changes can we actually institute with any better players before next year? I, I, look, I'm just flabbergasted. That was, a, that was a result that, oh my goodness, you know, you don't want to be... You don't want to be fuzzy this year after some of the performances, but hang on, you want to be ready? I mean, would he be ready to walk or not? Does he think he can do anything to... Is he part of the inconsistency? It's very frustrating. They're just shocking. Absolutely shocking at the moment. And it's hard to tune in for these games across the world because, well, well I expect a victory. And, 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 and now it's a coin toss. And we're more likely to lose the coin toss, I reckon. Let's talk about the massive crowd at Eden Park. Something positive, can yeah, we? Yeah, okay, we'll finish on that, mate. It was look, mate. It was just All one right. of those w- things where, you know, to be part of it, it was just, it's, it was euphoric, and I, and I and I compare it to when Grant Elliott hit that six and put us in a World Cup final for the first time. It was just that kind of feeling. It was really fun, and I know you don't get that word attached to rugby tests very often, but a different crowd, you know, and a different demographic, um, a lot more kids, a lot, more, you know, a lot more kind of family kind of crowd, less, a lot less boozing. And, you know, when you've got a team that's an underdog, I think that all helps. And then you have a seesawing game like that and you reach that crescendo in that last moment where that line-out grab was just unbelievable. So, you know, it was the perfect storm, wasn't it, really? But somehow they've got a capture on this. But just in terms of being in that stadium for that particular event, man, I'm so glad I was there. Yeah, well, I wondered if you'd go. And, you know, as I watched it, actually, I thought to myself, this would have been a really fantastic event to be at it just felt like you're right and we've talked about the whole tournament the start of it was pretty good but i think it finished on a higher note which is exactly what they wanted and i think it's just fantastic that the world now that new zealand has won the first ever women's rugby world cup is jumping on behind women's rugby well, hang on a sec. No, no, I've made... I've, I've, that's no, there's, my notes no, are wrong there. No, no, this, yeah. That's their sixth victory. There you go. So why is it this year? Is it only because it's here? Yeah, I think it's is a large match. Is this matter, further for the yeah. women's game anywhere else? Yeah, you're right on, man. You're right on. Look, 2017, not, I, I, we look, were all I'm over this not tournament. I'm sure where it sits, right? People, yeah, people have jumped all over, and that is really good. But what they've got to do now is they've got to somehow convert all of those people who have loved this to continue to keep watching. The women's game. Yeah. And also the men's game, because the men's game's not attracting big crowds. Let's be honest about it. So they've converted well, a hell of a... it's a combination. I think we've gone down this road. Is it that... i tell you the one thing I think that people enjoyed a lot about it um, was the attitude of the players. Yeah, man, totally. You know, there seemed to, there seemed to be a... Uh, I, I suppose because it's not or hasn't been viewed in the same serious light as the men's game, that it was a little bit easier to enjoy. And I think the combination of the new crowd that they're talking about, you know, the uh, more women and kids creating an environment that, that probably is more suitable for families. That's what it looked like. The, the singing after it the willingness for the crowd to be involved with the players. We've questioned the way it's been covered in terms of the media coverage. And I know you've spoken to organisers of the tournament. I think they got it right for this because it is bigger than any of the others have been. Yeah, totally. 
And it's put a bigger focus on women's sport than almost anything I can remember. The crowd certainly is so much bigger than anything. Can we get this same kind of support for women's football, for netball, you know, which, which yeah. primarily has always attracted women, but but never to a bigger crowd of ten thousand. So what what was the mix? We need a review. We need a review to break down how they got the mix right. Which parts of it actually rank? If they surveyed people that went to the games, I'm sure they'll want to hear about why they did or didn't enjoy it, and they'll probably not want to hear from old school rugby fans, but new school rugby fans. And how do we work this atmosphere into all our games going forward and maybe take some of them lessons back to the NPC, Martin, which has died? How come no one gets excited about that anymore? Is it the seriousness with which we view it, which means the enjoyment of the, of the moment life you had on Saturday night isn't there?